ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಮಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತಾಂ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ in this whole creation there are so many living beings among so many living beings one living being that is i the human being there are so many species in this creation tiny species are there from bacteria virus onwards and ants are there insects are there birds are there animals are there human beings are there plants are there all are living beings a living being is one who is having life the prana life principle where it is available that is called living being among so many living beings i am also one living being with extraordinary senses with a thinking faculty and intellectual faculty that is uniqueness of my existence in this creation as a human being what is that uniqueness a dog cannot recognize itself as a dog an alsatian dog cannot say to that street dog you are a street dog i am a alsatian dog i am in a palace you are on the street a dog cannot afford to say that any being in this creation do not have that capacity to recognize its form any species other than human being cannot identify or recognize its existence as so and so but i the human being recognize identify myself from other beings i am a human being 
I am not any other being. Not only that, all other beings are having different, different characteristics. I am with a different features. This is possible only one living being in the creation that is human being. Even though physical body breathing is common. Ahara nidra bhaya maidhunamcha eating, sleeping, fear, procreation, all these are common for every being in the creation. It's common to me also, human being. Buddhirhi tesham adhiko visheshahana I have intellectual faculty, thinking faculty. I am using this whole creation for my enjoyment, entertainment. So therefore, I am a different being in this creation. Why? For what? Why they don't have that unique capacity? Why I have this capacity? For what purpose? Crores and millions of species, when they are with that faculty, why this unique faculty to me alone, to the human being? Why not for them? I do not know. But I can think there must be some purpose. I am born with extra faculty, there must be some purpose which they cannot accomplish, I can accomplish. There must be something which they cannot accomplish, I can accomplish because I have extra faculty. Since they don't have that extra faculty, they cannot accomplish, I can accomplish. I have extra faculty, intellectual faculty, thinking faculty, identification, recognition faculty I have, they don't have. How many beings I am seeing in front of my eyes with the same hunger, with the same sleeping activity, with the same procreation I am seeing in them, They are also running for food. They are also having fear. They also have love, affection, their kids, babies. But what for this faculty? I have to think as a human being. If I don't think what for this faculty, what to accomplish, if I don't think think, suppose, this is the crucial point. If I don't think what for this faculty, extra faculty, which is not there in other beings, if I don't think I am unfortunate, I am missing something, that privilege given to me, as a human being, if I don't think in this manner, any human being, if they don't think like this, they are unfortunate people, Shastra says. They must think, why I have this faculty, why they don't have? 
even i i do not know that reason doesn't matter but there is something purpose to accomplish i have to what is that accomplishment what i have to accomplish they also want to sukham comfort i also want comfort sukham but i can accomplish much more there is some purpose to recognize that uh, real nature of this whole creation that which other being cannot afford to know in this creation i can recognize that uh, entity which is the substratum which is the underlying truth which is the base which is the source of this creation i can recognize i can identify it what it is for that purpose alone human being this life i have to recognize that identity i have to recognize that truth i have to recognize that substratum i have to recognize that source of this whole creation because i have a capacity to recognize i have capacity to accomplish to that to recognize they cannot i can let me use that capacity if i don't use the capacity i am also same like that other beings having attained this human birth i have not used that extra faculty of human life so that is uh, their purpose to accomplish to accomplish that purushartha whatever i accomplish whatever i want to accomplish is called purushartha purushena arthyate iti purushartha that which i want to accomplish purushena arthyate by a human being that which he desire her she desire what is that sukham so come i can accomplish what way i want other beings cannot ananda that ananda even though it is they desire but they cannot accomplish what they want what way they want but i the human being have a will power choice to accomplish what way i want that i can accomplish you want to accomplish that by 8 o'clock everyone feel hungry no that are beings also feel hungry we also feel hungry but there is something in between lines they say in between lines in between hunger and fear between in between fear and uh, desire in between f- desire and uh, what creating progeny in between lines there is something there is underlying current is there that is will power choice they don't have choice i have choice whether to come to camp or not they have no choice whether to stay in this ashram or ramana maharshi ashram they don't have choice swami suddhananda swami ji ashram la it is very nice for let me stay for 10 days other 10 days let me go to seshadri swami ashram another 10 days ramana maharshi ashram any dog can think like that can it have a plan 
Next year, where the sadhana camp? You can think. Dog cannot plan. Who is going to come for next camp? Which Swami is going to come? A dog can effort to that? Think like that? No. Let me use this faculty in full measure. For that only we have come to the camp. Let us use that faculty in full measure. How to utilize that faculty? How to utilize that faculty? Once you utilize that faculty and you accomplish that faculty's higher goal, then you can attain the total peace, shanti, ananda, complete ananda. That ananda which you are searching for. That ananda every being searching for, but I, the human being, can accomplish the total ananda, total freedom, total relaxation. I can achieve. So therefore that uh, sukha prapti, sukha prapti means I want to attain sukha ananda. That sukha prapti has to be converted into moksha prapti. That sukha prapti, the desire for moksha alone is called moksha icha. Sukha icha we have to convert into moksha icha. Desire for freedom. Desire for freedom. Icha means desire. Moksha means freedom. Freedom from what? I desire for freedom from sorrow because I desire sukha. Sukha prapti I have converted into moksha prapti. Dukkha nivritti I want to free from sorrow, dukkha nivritti. That is called moksha icha. Dukkha nivritti eva sukha prapti. Where there is sorrow, you cannot have sukha. Where there is sorrow, you cannot have sukha. Sorrow means dukkha. Sukha means ananda. So, sukha and dukkha cannot go together. Sukha, dukkha cannot go together. Why? Both are opposites. Two opposite entities cannot coexist in one place. Sorrow and joy cannot coexist. Light and darkness cannot coexist. Because light is entirely different. Darkness is different. Similarly, Sukha, Dukkha also cannot coexist. So, Dukkha, Nivritti, I want to be free from Dukkha, sorrow. Then, that means what indirectly you are asking for what? Ah, sukha. You are asking for Sukha. I don't want sorrow. I don't want Dukkha. Any one of you want sorrow? No. No, no, no. no. Not at all. We don't want at all Dukkha. Then indirectly you are asking for what you are without telling. I want Sukha. Sukha Icha. I desire Sukha. I want Sukha. So, Dukkha Nivrutti. I want to be free from Dukkha. I want Sukha. The Sukha Icha alone is called Moksha Icha. Now, see the words how you have to convert. Dukkha Nivrutti eva Sukha Prapti. Sukha Prapti means Sukha Icha. Sukha Icha means Moksha Icha. First step over. That Moksha Icha, how to get? No. Sukha prapti, how to get? I have converted into moksha icha. Same word, sukha icha or moksha icha. Both are one and the same. So the moksha icha has to be converted into shastra icha. That sukha or moksha is the subject matter where the Shastra is talking. That is available in Shastra. 
Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita. That content is available. You want Sukham? You want Moksha? Come on, study this. Book is available. Shastra Ichal. I do not know where is that book. I have to find out. But they say that Sukha, what you want, it is available in this Shastra. But what to do with the Shastra? Only putting Kumkum? Eh? No, you have to study. So, Shastra Icha to Shravana Icha. You have to listen. You have to listen. So, Sukha Icha to Moksha Icha to Shastra Icha to Shravana Icha. Let me listen to that Shastra. Listen, Shravanam. Listen in to Shastra. That Shastra Icha is because of Moksha Icha. Moksha Icha is because of Sukha Icha. You know, in the connection, are you put correct? Okay. The connection should be proper. Sukha Icha to Moksha Icha to Shastra Icha to Shravana Icha. Listen. From whom? Uh, where I have to go? Uh, Guru Icha. I desire for a teacher who can speak, who can speak the words from the Shastrana, who can unfold the words which are all there in Shastra, that words which are talking about my freedom, which is Sukha I want. So to that Guru I have to turn. Shravana Icha to Guru Icha. So that Guru I have to approach. Which Guru? Who can reveal the words of the Shastra? In which Shastra that Moksha Prapti is dealt in that book? That Guru only I have to approach because there are so many Gurus. There are so many gurus. But for with all those gurus, I have no connection. I don't want any guru. I want only one guru. Who is that guru? I want Sukham. That Sukham is Moksham. That Moksha is available in Shastra. That Shastra, I have to listen. That listening is possible from a teacher who can reveal those words. So that Guru, if I get, what to do? Let me listen. Therefore, I have come to the camp, finally. Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, the whole Vedic literature meant for this. Vedas have come here to fulfill that desire of that human being, to give Moksha Purushartha, Moksha Ananda, I, the human being, can accomplish dharma, artha, kama, moksha. The final, ultimate purushartha, after achieving which there is no other goal. Purushartha means a goal. Earning money is a goal. Eating food is also a goal. Okay. And enjoying all pleasures is also a goal. Doing good actions is also, my aim is to serve the people. Also it is a goal. Dharma, Artha, Kama also are important in my life, but they are also part of my life, but they are not ultimate goals. They can never give me total ananda. What can give total ananda? That is only moksha. Ultimate moksha purushartha alone gives that ananda. Therefore, dharma, artha, kama are intermediary goals. They are all intermediary goals. When you are traveling from Nellur to Tiruvannamalai, until you reach Tiruvannamalai, there are many stations. You are coming from Chennai to Tiruvannamalai, there are so many stations. You have taken Idli, Vada, Allah. But none of you stayed there. Thank God, all of you are here. Okay. All of you are here. 
None of you has stayed. You know what is your goal? Thiruvannamalai. Thiruvannamalai. Innu varliya, innu varliya. <laughs> Still it has not come. You are waiting for that goal. Why? Why that Ganesh Bhavan itself, you, today also you can eat idli. No, 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 no Swamini. My goal is Thiruvannamalai. That is intermediary goal. That is there in your mind. Similarly, as a human being, I have come into this Jeevana Yatra journey. What is my ultimate goal? Not earning money alone? Not having family, house, car, bangla? These are all intermediary goals. Qualifications, education, all intermediary goals. Marriage, children, intermediary goals. Punya, intermediary goal. Ultimate goal is moksha. Durlabham trayame vaitad daiva anugraha hetukam. Three are very, very difficult to get in this world. Durlabham, very, very difficult to accomplish. Trayam, three. Durlabham means difficult to get, accomplish. Trayam means three. What are those three? Etat. Daivanugraha hetukam. Those three are possible only through the grace of the Lord. Daiva anugraha hetukam. What are those three which are available by the grace of the Lord? Manushyatvam. Born as a human being only by the grace of the Lord. Manushyatvam. Mumukshutvam, desire for moksha. Mumukshutvam. And Mahapurusha Samshrayaha, association with noble Mahatmas, association with jnanis, association with the saints is also Daiva Anugraha Hetukam. Blessing. Grace of the Lord, only it is possible. So I have got all those three. Manushyatvam, I have got human life, one thing. You can put tick mark, okay. Manushyatvam, mumukshutvam, desire for moksha, desire for sukha prapti, is there. Adi put tick mark, okay. Mahapurusha samshraya, meeting with those people who are going to give me this ananda, this Sukha, that Ishwara Swarupam, Atma Swarupam, those are going to reveal those Mahatmas, Sanyasis, or Swaminis, or Swamijis. Association with those people is also, if I utilize, that is also put tick mark, put, and it is your choice. I don't ask you to put tick mark. Human being, because we are all human beings. That I can say boldly. Whether you have Tevra Moksha Itcha or not, I do not know. Then you are feeling that Mahapurushas I am meeting and that feeling you are having or not, I do not know. Therefore, the tick mark you have to put. I cannot say sure. It is up to you. Daiva Anugraha Hetukam. What a fortunate person I am. Enna Punyam Seideno. Sadguru Natha. Enna punyam seidhanu. What punya I have done, I do not know. In previous janmas, Bhagavan, you have given me right direction. I am so fortunate for such a person who recognized these three. I am a unique human being in this world. I want that sukha, ananda, ultimate ananda, that is moksha prapti in this birth itself. Not next birth. Now, here itself, I want. With that desire, I am here, I the human being, for such people, there are Mahatmas come down to the earth. Bhagavan himself come down to the earth in the form of human being. Among those such Mahatmas, one Mahatma is 
there are so many thousands of mahatmas are there among so many mahatmas who have descended onto this earth to fulfill the desire of such human beings who desire for moksha for such purusharthis mahatmas among them adi shankaracharya is one such a great mahatma adi shankara is none other than shiva lord shiva's avatar who born in kaladi kerala within a short span of life he has given the most treasure to the whole humanity till today we are all able to receive that teaching because of his grace what adi shankaracharya did a great bhagavat pada adi shankaracharya they call then avatar shankaram shankaracharyam shankara the lord shankara is in the form of shankaracharya adi shankaracharya that shankaracharya adi shankaracharya wrote number of books for such mumukshus like you uh, such adi shankaracharya wrote number of texts for such mumukshus like you teevra mumukshus jignasus commentaries on upanishads 10 upanishad he had written commentaries bhashyam what is the exact meaning of upanishads he has written there are 108 upanishads are there available now among those 108 upanishad principal upanishads are 10 for those 10 he has written commentary and bhagavad gita he has written commentary you can understand exact meaning of that bhagavad gita once you have the knowledge of that shankara bhashyam for mediocre mumukshus those who cannot understand such is very very subtle abstract subject matter for mediocre people he has written so many prakarana granthas in thousands upadesha sahasri is a text with thousand verses written by shankaracharya a prakarana grantha 500 shlokas one another text 100 shlokas shata shloki 100 shlokas another text 10 shlokas dasha shloki another text the same content how to get ananda sukha prapti he puts in 1000 shlokas he puts in 500 shlokas he puts in 100 shlokas he puts in 10 shlokas he put in one shloka because our camp is very short time in one shloka we want to learn the instant coffee madre you know what to do for this itself many of you are not getting leave to come thursday afternoon as swami you leave na so shankaracharya knows this problem so they cannot study 500 shlokas 1000 shlokas and are let them study one shloka i am able to give the teaching in one shloka also that is the caliber of a great mahatma that is the greatness of a great teacher who can present the whole subject matter in 1000 shlokas 500 shlokas 10 shlokas even one shloka and he is confident also people are able to understand my shloka even it is in one shloka they can understand if a competent teacher can teach <laughs> those who already have that 1000 shlokas knowledge 500 shlokas knowledge 100 shlokas knowledge 10 shlokas knowledge she can put or he can put in one shloka whatever i have given that one shloka teaching is from the essence of brihadaranyaka upanishad he puts in one shloka format that is the content is from brihadaranyaka upanishad from swayam jyoti brahmanam from swayam jyoti brahmanam he puts that whole content comes 
in one sloka what a beautiful teaching you wonder when you look into that sloka very very amazing topic this is how a an acharya can put like that na even though he has not planned to write a shloka this is another there is a big story behind this shloka very interesting story what is that story happened behind this shloka i will tell you there is one village na in that village there is a great vidwan pandit great scholar who has already studied all that vyakaranam mimamsa all this vedanta shastrams everything he has shiksha kalpam vyakaranam niruktam chandasu jyotisham ella all the shastras he has well read and he is there in that village but unfortunately that pandit has got a chronic disease you know that disease is skin disease he has got once he got that skin disease his body is looking so ugly so he is not interested in appearing to the public the whole body is looking ugly even though he is well learned scholar he is not able to withstand with that disease i am looking so ugly how can i go in front of people i am not able to go in front of people therefore he started sitting at home only stopped going outside not at all going outside sitting at home only 24 hours one day he heard that adi shankaracharya is coming to that village adi shankaracharya he is going to come to that village that pandita heard about that before adi shankaracharya entering into that village adi shankaracharya's glory vibhuti mahatmyam reached to that village in no shankaracharya has not yet come but his glory has already publicized by the people then this mahatma thought no mahatma is going to come this pandita thought let me go and meet this mahatma he is having a pain inside the pandita is having a pain why this disease for me that pain he want to come out of that let me go and meet this mahatma acharya something he felt in his heart then adi shankaracharya came to that village and all people are inviting him all panditas big big vidwans are standing in front of him with purna kumbha and all with veda mantras with veda ghosha they are inviting shankaracharya Sh- shankaracharya is coming into that village when he is coming this pandita also saw that adi shankaracharya after seeing that adi shankaracharya's face this pandita felt something in his mind and he saw the tejas in his face adi shankaracharya's face la after seeing this tejas in his face just he rushed to him and fell on his feet and did sashtang namaskar and catched you no know, his whole feet and he looked at him to that adi shankaracharya's face and adi shankaracharya looked at that pandita and just compassion poured from the heart of adi shankaracharya when he saw this pandita in this condition by mahatmas knows the seeing the face itself he understood the pain he is undergoing and the compassion the karuna vatsalyam poured from adi shankaracharya's heart and then adi shankaracharya just said one word 
तत् तम असि तत् दट ब्रह्मन तम यू आर असि यू आर दट ब्रह्मन then adi shankara acharya having said this mahavakya to that pandita adi shankara acharya had a talk na no, simple questions na no, asking question to that pandita within few minutes adi shankara acharya asking one question that pandita is answering asking and answering that dialogue took place in between them and the sishyas who is standing near to adi shankara acharya they might have formulated this you know, shloka the dialogue between adi shankara acharya and that pandita if you put that question and answer in a verse form that shloka is this shloka eka shloki the dialogue between the pandita and adi shankara acharya if you put in a verse form that is the verse is this verse what is the content of this verse we are going to see that today tomorrow and after tomorrow also even the one shloka in our regular classes i take three shlokas minimum four shlokas in one class one hour now in this camp are three hours one shloka for three days morning sessions one shloka but it's a big shloka this we will read this shloka what is the meaning we will see those who cannot read sanskrit there is an english transliteration in the down below the shloka you can go through that english transliteration those who cannot read sanskrit those who can read sanskrit they can look into sanskrit i read the line you repeat after me kim jyotis tava bhanu manaha ni me रात्रौ प्रदीपादिक किं ज्योतिस्तव भानुमानि मे रात्रौ प्रदीपादिक रविदीपदर्शन किं ज्योतिराख्या मे सदीपदर्शन विध किं ज्योतिराख्या मे क्षुस्तमी समे चक्षुस्तमी समे किं धीर्धियो दर्शन चक्षुस्तमी समे किं धीर्धियो दर्शन किं तत्रो भरम ज्योतिस्तदस्मि प्रभो किं तत्रोन परम कम ज्योतिस्तदस्मि प्रभो 
ज्योतिस्तदस्मि प्रभो that is a question what is that in there itself there is an answer also question and answer are, are together in that verse so I am going to present that question what is the question what is the answer before going to that word to word meaning let us know the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad background. Janaka Maharaja, you know Janaka Maharaja, father of Sita. Mm. Great Great Mumukshu, Janaka Maharaja, Thivra Mumukshu, later he became a Jnani. Generally Thivra Mumukshu will become what? Jnani. Like you, you are also going to become great Jnanis. Because you are all Thivra Mumukshus. I hope so. Otherwise how can you come to this camp? Okay? Thivra Mumukshus. I told you, you know, one student, when I asked, I gave the form, your occupation, your qualification, he wrote Thivra Mumukshu. <laughs> Thivra Mumukshu. Thivra is intense. Mumukshu is desirer of moksha. So, like that, Janaka Maharaja was a Thivra Mumukshu. And he used to invite all Panditas, scholars, Jnanis to his Sabha. Sabha means in the Raj Darbar. He used to worship them, revere them. Any Mahatma comes into to that kingdom, anywhere in the world, he used to invite him. That Mahatma, please teach me. Please teach me. He used to ask everyone. All Mahatma should come to his palace only. Like that one day, Janaka Maharaja invited Agnyavalkya, Maharishi. And Janaka Maharaja said, asked, I want to ask you so many questions. I have so many doubts in my mind. I want to ask you. Then Agnyavalka is a great Rishi, Jnani, Brahmarshi. Yes, you can ask. Janaka Maharaja, not one question, two questions. You have to stay in my palace only for many more days so that I can ask you and you can teach me. So what? I can stay here. I am so happy to teach you. Then Janaka Maharaja, nature is that once the Guru comes, once you accept the Guru, he started giving the cows, thousand cows I am going to give, not ordinary cows, that cows which are very hale and healthy, they can yield milk sufficiently and that cows which are decorated with their horns with golden golden cover you know, how much you know thousand cows with golden the horns are covered with golden so costly you take all these things you know, he has given gurudakshina then agnivalka said teaching has not yet started how can i take these cows <laughs> And there are many Panditas are sitting in the Darbar. And Agnivalka said, these questions, who can answer for them only? These cows, all they belong to them. Agnivalka is very sure, I am only going to answer, hey Sishya, take care of these cows. Let me answer, then we will take. 
then he are he's already kept them separately you know so confident that teacher no nobody can answer except myself agnivalka knows that because he is also an avatar of vishnu agnivalka and agnivalka answering janaka janana janaka maharaja is questioning what is that na the whole essence this this shloka no so such a great janaka maharaja attained gnanam similarly indra also attained gnanam through brahma ji narada also attained gnanam through sanak sanakka sanandana sanat kumaras like this parampara continuously the mumukshus are getting knowledge from great teachers it is not now it is today only people are all going to vedanta classes studying bhagavad gita no from the time creation time onwards this learning is taken place at that you know from that indra level onwards rajas narada uh, we are not only mumukshus there are so many mumukshus were there and they attained gnana with what knowledge same mahavakya tattvamasi same mahavakya same teaching all great people they became gnanis with the same teaching so that what you are learning is not ordinary teaching no the subject is not an ordinary subject that the subject which has already was already received by agnyavalkya janaka maharaja narada indra varuna agni all the devatas received this knowledge great great people in the history anywhere in any yuga you see the same teaching content is same just like 4 plus 4 is equal to 8 in which yuga ha huh? kali yuga or treta yuga dwapara yuga krita yuga 4 plus 4 is equal to what 8 in which country in which yuga morning or night the truth is truth at any time at any place to anyone in the mood point gnapakam vechukonga 4 plus 4 is equal to 8 is the truth is the fact for anyone at any time at any place there is no change in that even the teachers competent teacher however much great the teacher cannot change 4 plus 4 is 8 only i am so great i came from <laughs> somewhere so 4 plus 4 is equal to 9 and solla mudiyuma can he or she dare to say no that is called the truth therefore you are brahman is the truth no one can change no one can man- manipulate no one can adjust when guru says you are brahman you have to convert into first person how i am brahman so i am brahman is the truth no one can change at any time at any place by any one i am brahman is the truth but i do not know i am brahman you have to know that is the fact fact is that to be known everyone should know that fact the truth is to be known it is not to be neglected a truth that which is the substratum that which is the entity real has to be known that is the chaitanyam brahma the consciousness is the substratum of this whole creation in religion they call it as god sarvam ramamayam jagat what sarvam vishnumayam jagat sarvam shivamayam jagat 
சர்வம் தேவிமயம் ஜெகத் வாட் இட் மீன்ஸ் சர்வம் மீன்ஸ் சர்வம் மீன்ஸ் ஆல் எவ்ரிதிங் இஸ் பகவான் ஓன்லி தெர் இஸ் நத்திங் அதர் தேன் பகவான் in religion the word they use once you come to philosophy the same god word or devi or shiva vishnu or any other god that name is converted into brahman sarvam brahmamayam jagat brahma mukkate para brahma mukkate ramudokkade tyagaraja sang ఉండేది రాముడు ఒక్కడే అన్న అప్పుడు కృష్ణుడు ఇల్లియా అన్న దెర్ ఇస్ నో కృష్ణ ఏ కృష్ణ రామ ఆర్ బోన్ బోత్ ఆర్ వన్ అండ్ ద సేమ్ కృష్ణ ఈజ్ బ్రహ్మన్ రామా ఈజ్ బ్రహ్మన్ దేవి ఈజ్ బ్రహ్మన్ డిఫరెంట్ నేమ్స్ సో ద రిలీజియన్ ఈజ్ ద స్టెప్పింగ్ స్టోన్ టు ఎంటర్ ఇన్ టు ఫిలాసఫీ ఫిలాసఫీ ఈజ్ ద అల్టిమేట్ గోల్ వన్ హ్యాస్ టు రికగ్నైజ్ హిజ్ ఓన్ రియల్ నేచర్ so without religion the god worship initial stages eka rupa bhakti person cannot understand the formless brahman therefore religion is important like a mother's womb just for a baby mother's womb is important to grow once the baby growth is completed baby comes out then baby grows and into a full fledged human being attain that whole personality similarly the religion is like a womb for a teevra mumukshuke religion is like a mother's womb it has to develop puja anushthanam bhakti ekarupa bhakti aneka rupa bhakti total surrender to the lord then guru bhakti shastra bhakti everything has to grow 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 and gracefully come to vedanta once you come to vedanta the purpose of religion is served you have received what you have to receive from the religion the religion bless you any religion any god you worship doesn't matter it bless you but the religion is not ultimate you have to come to philosophy philosophy is impossible without religion religion is incomplete without philosophy so philosophy everyone has to come to upanishads religion you can follow any religion doesn't matter but you have to come to what 4 plus 4 is equal to 8 for which religion christian, eh? christian eh? muslim eh? hindu eh? zoroastrian eh? or any other religion or any follower of any cult అవనికి మాత్రం ఫోర్ ప్లస్ ఫోర్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు డిఫరెంట్ ఆన్సర్ వరం ఈజ్ ఇట్ పాసిబుల్ నో ఫర్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఫోర్ ప్లస్ ఫోర్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు ఎయిట్ ఓన్లీ సిమిలర్లీ అహం బ్రహ్మాస్మి ఆన్సర్ ద ట్రూత్ ఈజ్ కామన్ వన్ ట్రూత్ ఫర్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఫిలాసఫీ ఈజ్ ఓన్లీ వన్ దట్ సే వీ డోంట్ యాక్సెప్ట్ మెనీ ఫిలాసఫీస్ క్రిస్టియన్ ఫిలాసఫీ వీ డోంట్ యాక్సెప్ట్ Muslim philosophy we don't accept, even Patanjali philosophy we don't accept, even Sankhya philosophy we don't accept, any philosophy we don't accept. But religions following the methods we accept, but the truth cannot be changed. That is Advaita philosophy. Only Brahman Asteen. That is you are. Once you recognize that Brahman nature, you are Ananda Swarupa. Sukha Prapti, natural. spontaneous i don't want anandana ondudu it comes i don't want happiness and it still it comes because you cannot say i am not brahman i am not consciousness you cannot say because you are that therefore here he asks from the first question that we will see tomorrow morning purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate పూర్ణస్యూర్నమా పూర్ణమేవశిష్యే ఓం శాంతి 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 హరి ఓం శ్రీ గురుభ్యో నమ హరి ఓ